Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, February 21st, 24th, excuse me, of 2014. Uh, first item we have is a consent agenda. We've got the minutes of the meeting for February 10th and a request for the one-day beer and wine license uh, for Town Hall for Dallin Elementary School <coughs> Spring Auction. Is there anyone here from Dallin who wanted to talk about that? Seeing no one. Do I have a motion? Oh, oh you are. <coughs> then do you want to come on up to the mic and... Welcome. Hi. Could you introduce yourself? I'm Kate Lucian. I Welcome. live at 39 Inverness Road, and I'm the PTO co-president at Dallin. So we're um, grateful for you to consider our request to have a one-day liquor license for our um, biennial auction. Uh, move approval. Second. We have approval and a second. Uh, on our desks right now, we've got um, something that wasn't in the packet, but it's from, I just read it a second ago, from Officer Rateau. And about, he, he reviewed and signed off on the application, but he had a couple concerns he wanted us to talk about. And one was that you've got one bar chair and you're expecting 300 people. Do you expect to really only have one? And if so, are they gonna bring in other people? And if so, you have to be in, they have to be in compliance and have their names, ages, and training certificates listed. We expect to have more than one and they will be in compliance. And if we need, we can provide him with that information in advance of the event okay. uh, to satisfy his question. So the movement, the motion that we make as a part of this is complying with all conditions. So sure. it is required that you have to have all that stuff before beforehand. Understood. Okay. And the second thing is, it's a first where application, applicants plan on transporting excess alcohol from the premises rather than having them distributors <coughs> retrieve it. And so just want to be clear that your license is for serving and pouring and the excess alcohol cannot be sold to any individuals to take off premise. We understand that and okay. we, again, full compliance with his request. Excellent. Thank you for dealing with the administration and just to, do you want to do a little bit of plug on uh, what's happening on the April 11th? Um, so Dallin holds an auction every other year. Um, it's our primary fundraiser for the PTO at Dallin um, and um, we have lots of wonderful donations both from the Dallin community and from Greater Arlington and even beyond. Um, and anyone in the community is invited to join us. There's a website, which um, of course I don't have off the top of my head. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, but we, um, we can probably put a link to it uh, through, through our Dallin School website, so. Excellent, that makes a lot of sense. I'm sure if people go to the Dallin School website, they'll see it uh, soon enough. Any questions further on Dallin? Thank you Thank very you. much. Um, I did have one note on the minutes that I followed up with just today with um, Mary Anna Marie. Under Article 54, the minutes, which is the resolution town meeting electronic voting, it says um, uh, we, we talk about favorable action. I think the vote we actually took was for um, to report to report for because report. we want to um, uh, talk. We don't. We aren't actually making a recommendation about electronic voting. We're waiting for the electronic right. voting experiment, then actually doing it. That's right. So without objection, that minute correction is made. That's right. Does anyone else have anything else on the consent agenda? <coughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Four zero. Thank you. Next up, introduction of the new veterans agent, Jeffrey Chunglo. Adam. So uh, I just wanted to give the board an opportunity to meet face to face the new veterans agent, Jeffrey Chunglo. Um, he can refresh me. I believe he's in either his second or third week already. Uh, he comes here with a very uh, impressive resume, 19 years uh, in the Navy, uh, as a Navy Reserve, uh, as well as uh, experience working in the medical industry and at the Veterans Administration Hospital uh, with a real passion for veterans services. So I know he, he's already impressed since he's been here, and I just wanted to give him the opportunity to say hello, uh, tell you a few things about himself, and then give you a chance to ask any questions you might have. Welcome. Why, thank you. Good evening. Um, Jeff Chunglo. Your director of veteran services. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, very thrilled to be here. Um, as Adam mentioned, it's a it is a passion of mine. So, past uh, 19 plus years, uh, I'm a Navy senior chief hospital corpsman. So familiar with the medical side of all the issues. Uh, also, past employee with the VA. So I'm very familiar with that side as well. Uh, so all the paperwork side. Uh, just really. Uh, really keen on uh, serving the community, your veterans' needs. Uh, we do face some challenges now with the returning younger population, uh, some other female-specific issues, uh, trying to capture those people and provide excellent service for the community. Excellent. Diane? Yeah. First, I want to say, on a personal note, thank you for your service to our country. Um, I definitely appreciate that. Um, my husband's a former Marine. 
I made the mistake of saying ex-Marine one time, introducing him, and you don't do that. So um, I first and foremost, thank you on that. Um, second, I just wanted to ask you in terms of, and from your resume, curriculum vitae, whatever, co cover letter, you're certainly well versed, not only um, being a veteran, but by some of the past positions you've held. I'm just wondering, um, and you haven't been here barely a month, so I don't expect you to have a 150% answer, but being a veteran, and you cite in there, you know, the experiences that need, that you will encounter coming back, um, coming out of the service or coming back and going back into the service. Mm -hmm. um, we have many different departments and services um, here in Arlington. Where, where are your first sort of outreach besides, you know, for veterans and veterans clubs, but thinking about veterans and their families, whether <coughs> the service men or women are overseas and helping the family that's here now with whatever services they might need or helping returning veterans, whether it's filling out forms with the VA or getting services that they need psychological or, or vocational. I'm just curious sure. how you envision doing that for us. Uh, multifaceted. Um, there are a lot of different aspects. Your elder uh, veteran population and dependents, so senior center outreach programs that way, um, and then media campaigns, uh, launching different campaigns through the community, uh, through the VA. Um, if you have people that have registered for welcome home bonuses, reaching out to them. Uh, anyone who has filed a DD-214 or through your town census has been listed as a veteran, that's a, a point of contact. So that's information that you have, okay. Correct. And what's the best way if, if a veteran or his or her family member wants to contact you? Are you an email, are you a phone, are you something else? Any and all. Any and all? Okay. Open access. Okay, um, thank you. Sure. Um, we're very delighted to have you here. Um, you obviously have some uh, big shoes to fill. Uh, Bill McCarthy was really, I think, ju not just because of what he did when he was earning, like when he was, you know, collecting his paycheck, but the stuff that he does around that and outside that, he's a, a significant part of our community. And, uh, you know, we, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you'll enjoy the challenge. Yes, and thankfully he'll, he'll still be a resource. So, <laughs> so that's a good thing. I do not doubt it one bit. <laughs> Questions? No, All right. I had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Chungo at Mr. McCarthy's farewell, and I'm looking forward to working with him. Excellent. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks, Jim. Uh, one thing I meant to do at the opening of the meeting, and it slipped my mind, which is I generally announced that these meetings are being recorded uh, and being cable cast on ACMI and might be recorded by other people. And that's something I should have done at the beginning, but um, it is done now. Next up. We have appointment for the Transportation Advisory Committee, Marjorie Moores. Marjorie. Marjorie, oh, excuse Sorry. me. Thank you very You're much. You're in the <coughs> Army. <coughs> yeah, I was. Maybe. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us what your relationship with PAC is and what you want to do. Sure. Um, my name is Marjorie Moores. There's an, uh, no problem. I'm used to it now. <laughs> um, and I have been an advisory uh, role to the TAC for about eight or nine months now, a non-voting member. Um, and with some turnover, they've asked me to step up. Um, I'm just, you know, getting to be in sync with, with all the issues and the projects and things that the, um, the committee's been working on. Uh, personally, I am um, a marketing and sales professional, 25 years in consumer products. I work most of that time with Welch's Food. Um, I have found myself with some free time lately, and um, this is really my first time kind of uh, volunteering in a town committee and I'm really you know pretty much enjoying getting used to uh, meeting everyone and learning the ropes cool. thank you uh, um, I we rely on TAC a lot as you know already yes. so uh, <laughs> we they definitely get some of our thornier issues and they do a lot of homework for us and so we really appreciate it we thank you very much for signing up to help out and sure. maybe bring your wisdom back up uh, to so we can make smart choices about uh, transportation. Uh, Anything we, else? Uh, do we have a motion? Move approval. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, next up we have appointee to the Board of Registrar. State law says that the two leading parties 
uh, each get a seat on our three-person uh, board of registrars. And uh, the Republican seat, I gather, is vacant. And uh, the Republican Party has come, uh, Republican committee has come forward with three recommendations. Um, and the, we've got a letter from Sean Harrington, <coughs> the chairman. Sean, are you here? I didn't see you here. Okay, so, but we do have three names here. We've got Philip Lones, I, apo Lones, I apologize, uh, John Warden, and Judith Quimby. And uh, Mr. Warden, I see you're uh, uh, standing up. Do you want to come on up and introduce yourself? And then we'll, we'll also invite, not Mr. Warden, that you actually need introduction, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. John. Uh, John Warden, uh, Jason Street. Um, I think most of you know me from my long service as uh, 19 years as moderator of uh, town meeting. And I've been involved in elections in this town since uh, 1968, uh, and I've uh, run in quite a few of them uh, since 1970. Um, I would be um, honored to uh, have this appointment as uh, uh, the uh, Republican, I know those are those are strange words in this chamber, uh, <laughs> uh, a, a member of the long uh, and a pleasant re working relationship with the town clerk's office going back to the days of uh, uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. Powers and then uh, Corinne Rangel and now uh, uh, Mrs. Mr. Corelli. And uh, I know all the people in there and we all get along very well together so I think it would, uh, I think it would be a good fit. Uh, as you know the law requires as you mentioned that three people be nominated uh, and the, uh, the town committee uh, had a meeting and uh, they, uh, the majority of them uh, supported uh, my nomination and requested that you make that appointment. Thank you. Thank you. Qu any questions for Mr. Warden? No. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Lones? Ms. Quimby? Mrs. Mahan? I'd like to move that we appoint John L. Ward in the third of 27 Jason Street as the Republican appointee for the Board of Registrar Voters. I also spoke with a few members of the Republican Town Committee over the weekend who um, spoke well of all three candidates, but my sense was um, the majority of support was with Mr. Warden. And I, I'll second the nomination for our former moderator and our Arlington Honor Award recipient from this, this board this past year. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? <coughs> all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Or zero. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Mr. Warden. Thank you, sir. Next up, community development block grant. Oh, there's something we can take. Well, that's it. It's up to you. We're at. I dec it is oh, seven. Yeah, yeah. It is indeed Sorry. seven thirty. So we will I do a public hearing. We, exactly. We tap danced <laughs> long enough to get this out there. Um, Community Development Block Grant Performance Update for Program Year 2013. We also have a second one, which is the vote, which is the request for the 2014-2015 <coughs> funding. Um, I'm assuming you want to do these separately, Carol? Sure. Okay. Where are you? Carol. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to just give you some highlights. Is the microphone positioned properly to? You pull it down a little. Okay. If you want to point it at you, that works best. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I want to first give some highlights, six, six bullet points on highlights of performance from subrecipients this year, if I may. Um, the Arlington Boys and Girls Club provided working parents with a safe, affordable place for 62 children to spend the summer months. They also provided summer employment for five teens in 2013. The club also made improvements to the boys' locker room, especially for accessibility improvements for patrons with disabilities. Vision 2020 conducted their census survey in 2013 with a strong return rate of 24%, focusing on how residents receive information about Arlington issues and events, how they participate in town government and Arlington events, and awareness of town goals. The Arlington Youth Counseling Center used CDBG funds to ensure that 34 eligible families received mental health counseling and therapy. $15,000 in CDBG funds helped provide 221 client sessions for children and adolescents, many of whom are not covered for these services anywhere else. The Arlington Recreation Department dispersed nearly $12,000 for scholarships, 37 individuals and families. They also provided three Arlington individuals with jobs for low-income youths and allowed 11 young people to participate in the Arlington Hockey Club 
through the Arlington Youth Hockey Scholarship Program. Just a couple more highlights here. Um, Operation Success, you're going to hear more from them themselves shortly, but they're located in Mo Monotomy Manor Housing Development. They provide educational support to 25 to 30 students, it's all volunteer, and the program is Monday through Thursdays, every Monday through Thursday um, evening during the academic year. Uh, CWG funds used, uh, were used to purchase supplies and equipment for the program. Fidelity House provides an outreach program to the children of Monotomy Manor which include free memberships, free transportation to and from Fidelity House, and free camperships and participation in other youth programs offered at Mon Monotomy Manor. Typically 90 to 100 children are served annually. So those are some impressive, in my opinion, impressive results uh, where a lot of our community groups are really making the most out of the CDBG funds they receive. We've received and you will receive some more requests this evening. We've received uh, 2.5 million in requests for the coming uh, year. Uh, we do not know, as you are familiar with past years, you typically don't know what your allocation is going to be for the following year at this point in a program year. So we'll, we'll have to see what we get, but we'll make our best attempt based on the current year's allocation. Thank you. Uh, do you want to walk through a little bit about how CDBG works, or do you want to, or do you want to, were you planning on doing that when we talk about next, uh, the, the request for next year? I can try to address any part of that. Um, we receive uh, funds from Housing and Urban Development. The, there is a subcommittee of the Board of Selectmen that works with planning staff to develop the budget and to allocate uh, the allotment plus any program income from the current year. And there are several different categories, uh, rehabilitation and housing, public services, public facilities and improvements, and planning and administration. W there are other categories that we have not for some years used. I think this coming year you'll see some for the historic preservation, which is a, can be a, a separate category, and economic development. There. Just where we're at this point, um, it was sort of an informal process in past years, and it's gotten a little more formalized, and I know the town manager um, and Ms. Kowalski have done it. If we, we could, at whatever point, the town manager and the planning director deem appropriate, whether it's halfway through the year or two-thirds of the way through the year, just sort of an approximation of, you know, the funding that went out, what's been spent, um, uh, similar to requests that Unfortunately, we can't, I hope we can fill them all, but I anticipate that we may not be able to fill them all to the exact amount that everybody wants. So it, it was done informally in the past with previous town managers. I know it was done this past year. So whatever point, I just want to sort of put a placeholder in that you all deem appropriate halfway through, two thirds of the way through. If we could get that, it was just a one page informal report, just saying here's where we are. And then I think um, last year <coughs> there were one or two projects that were highlighted. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, that's that's a, a, a incredibly fair request, and I believe what we did last year was when we put the proposed budget before the board for uh, endorsement to go before town meeting. We had a report on what had been spent to date, and we can go back. Okay, whatever uh, process you that. put in place, if we can we just can do, do the that. same thing this year, that's the absolutely. Thing. Thank you. Uh, other questions about the um, item six, the update for the 2013-14. No, do we have a motion for receipt then? Move we'll receipt. Second. Second. Uh, all, any further discussion? All those, actually, this is a public hearing. Uh, does anyone have any comments on the current program year? Seeing none. All those in favor of receipt, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Four zero. All right, next up, our requests for 2014-2015, which, at least this far, looks something like this. <laughs> okay. Carol? We have requests. Um, at this point, uh, totaling almost two and a half million, we expect, I expect you will have some additional requests tonight. Um, we've received requests for uh, a million fifty thousand in rehab and housing, 264,000 in public services, 930,000 in public facilities and improvements, 118,000 in planning, and 
question for Carol before we hear from others. Is there anyone here who wanted to talk about um, proposals or present new, add new proposals? Come on up. I, um, Welcome back. Thank you so much. My name is Janet McGuire, and I am representing Peggy Regan and myself for our Operation Success. Um, we are going into our 15th, 15th year of volunteering um, for Operation Success. Um, we'd like to thank the Town of Arlington, Arlington Housing Authority, Arlington Police Department, Arlington Advocate for just doing a recent article on us, and of course, Anna Witten, who has always supported us and helped us through the process. For Operation Success to run, though, we have 16 teacher volunteers from the Audison Middle School. Um, they volunteer Monday through Thursday evenings. Um, Peggy Regan and myself are the supervisors, along with Julie Keyes. We have five community residents that are volunteering as well one retired teacher and two teachers from outside of Arlington. Um, thus far, um, we are in the process. We have scheduled a girls night, a boys night. And um, thank you again for the computers. They're still up and running and in um, service, so thank you. And we are requesting um, 6,000 for supplies and keeping up the center. Again, it's a total volunteer project and all the money goes to the students that come in voluntarily there. So again, thank you very much. Thank you. Questions? I'll say um, I find that yours is one of the easiest ones to, to like there are a lot of competition and right, yours is one of those ones that's like, it is just so easy to say yes to, and so uh, I look forward to. I mean, obviously, we have to make an official vote later on, but I'm I'm really delighted with the work that your group does, and I thank you very much. Thank you. We'd love to have you come down sometime. That would be good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Um, front. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, second row. Sorry. It's my home. I'm adding my room back. All right. Good. Welcome. Uh, hello, I'm Lisa Urban. I work at Fidelity House, and um, I know I've come every year, and uh, I really appreciate the support, and that's one of the reasons I want to make sure I come and, and make sure that people are aware of the program that we do offer, because it's, it's such a necessary thing for our town. And um, one of the things we do do is we provide transportation. The, number th the two things that we've found have been the biggest barriers to acclimating kids to the whole community is transportation and just giving financial opportunity. Uh, so we try to fit the needs of all the different kids down there we, um, down, that reside down in the housing at Manami Manor. We provide transportation for day camp. They attend their day camp, they have swimming lessons in the morning. It's a whole, it, it really is like the old fashioned values of day camps from the past, current, hopefully years to come, um, and then we bring them back at the end of the day. So they are getting swimming lessons, they're with camp minimum of two weeks. It's really three weeks average for each kid that attends. Then we also do an on-site program during the school year, one day a week, and then we also bring them to Fidelity House twice a week, and you know they join all the activities at Fidelity House, and then we bring them back. So obviously the transportation and getting them as involved in po as possible and giving them the same opportunities as everyone else is our goal. And we obviously can't do it without your help, so we appreciate it. And I did ask for a little bit more this year, just we've really seen a lot of the younger kids always asking us how much something costs, which is just a sign that the parents are really struggling and money is a huge issue. So we wanna make sure that those kids are enjoying things and not worrying about how much things are and can I participate because it costs money. So I did ask for 4,000 more, 18,000. But um, hopefully it can work out and thanks again for your support because we couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much.
Hi, I'm Pam Hallett. I'm Executive Director of the Housing Corporation of Arlington. Welcome. Thank you. I want to say, first of all, thank you very much for all your support over the last 27 years. Uh, we've done 90 units of housing, and there's no way we could have done probably any of it without the, the town's serious support. Um, I just want to tell you that we're looking forward to a very exciting couple of years. We have a number of locations in the town that we're hoping to develop additional housing for. Um, I think it's most of it's in the report that you received, so I won't go into specifics here. But you should know that we have over a thousand households on our waiting list, which is astounding to us. And we have many, many elderly and uh, sort of middle-aged people walking into our offices on a daily basis, either almost homeless or currently homeless, sleeping on someone's couch. So we'd really appreciate any kind of support you can give us. Uh, to go ahead and build 27 units in one location, 10 in another, and perhaps 6 to 27 if we can get the rest of the land uh, under control over the next couple of years. Uh, Department of uh, Housing and Community Development for the state has invited us to apply for the 27 unit, so we're madly putting that application together now to make it for the March 21st deadline, so wish us luck on that. But I just want to say thank you and uh, I hope you have look at us fondly. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Come on up. Welcome. Hi. I'm Anne LaRoyer, the chair of the Open Space Committee. And I haven't been here for quite a few years, but some of you know in the past, um, through the CDBG grants, we've gotten funding to help us put together the Open Space Plan. And the current plan expires in December of 2014. So we're asking for less than $10,000 this year uh, to help us hire a consultant to help us do some of the research, background research, and also do the graphic design and the presentation of the final report that will, of course, come to you uh, in draft form and for your endorsement. And it will go to town meeting, and then it goes to the state for their official approval. And um, as you might know, the open space plan is important for the town to have it in place so we can apply for state grants uh, for open space uh, concerns and recreation uh, issues. And um, timing is good this year because with the master planning process going on, both plans are actually complementing each other so we're able to you know, use some information back and forth. So that's another reason why we're requesting less money this time than we were last time, which was $15,000. So we hope that you will, of course, again, support this planning uh, grant and uh, look forward to seeing the plan as it comes together during the year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? No. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else want to talk about community development block grants, have an application they want to submit, anything like that? Um, seeing none. Move receipt. We have motion for receipt. Second. Second. Um, I guess one thing I sh uh, should mention is that we talk, uh, I sit on the subcommittee with uh, Stephen, and uh, one of the things that we're concerned about is that the amount of money that we get from community development block grants continues to be challenged, and especially with uh, things like the budget sequester and uh, other items that happen, because this, of course, is a purely federal program, is that we lose money. And so not only do we get more requests, but we also have left less to pass out. And so one of the things that I think we, at this point, need to pass out every time we pa pass out the application <coughs> is talking about uh, what the long-term plan is and how can we, all these you know, charities and projects and plans, uh, identify other sources of funding because uh, the community development block grant probably is not going to be the one that can solve us uh, forever. And it's going, to, it's going to require us to make some really hard choices um, going forward. All right, so we have a motion. Is there any further comment? No, I just say to your point, I appreciate the uh, quite a number of the applications did include addenda that, that addressed that specific point as well, and that, that's appreciated. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Four zero. <coughs> Thank you very much. All right. Anna, you know if you hadn't been here, we would have had five questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Storm uh, approval uh, <coughs> of revival and continuation of the Arlington Belmont Cambridge uh, Stormwater Flooding Board. Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
So back in 2005, uh, via a special act of the state legislature, the Arlington, Belmont, Cambridge, or ABC Stormwater Flooding Board was formed. Uh, and based upon that original act, that board uh, ceased to formally exist in 2010. Uh, it continued to informally operate and continues to informally operate, uh, but based on the advocacy of the board uh, via a letter sent uh, through my office last year, as well as I'm assuming advocacy on the part of Belmont and Cambridge, uh, a further or another special act was passed um, last year which would allow for the continuation and revival of the ABC Stormwater Flooding Board retroactive to its original expiration date of December 31st, 2010, continuing until December 31st, two, uh, 2017. Uh, so part of that act says that to reestablish it, Arlington's Board of Selectmen needs to vote to revive and continue, Belmont's Board of Selectmen needs to vote to revive and continue, and Cambridge's city manager needs to sign off. Once all of those things happen, we notify the Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, who holds a public hearing on the matter and if there's no concerns, reestablishes it and we once again execute a joint powers agreement. So you have before you tonight the original joint powers agreement. Uh, if the board votes in um, favor tonight of reviving and continuing the board, we'll send the appropriate notification to the Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, begin the process of updating the joint powers agreement, and then bring it back updated with new dates for the board to sign once the other communities have approved. Move approval. Second. Motion and second, Mrs. Mahan. I know um, years ago when we went through the CSO variance hearings, and I think they come up every five or 10 years, I know, um, or it could be every 10 or 15. I know uh, it was myself and Ms. Rowe, and then probably, I think three or six years before that, I think Ms. Mrs. Dias might have gone. Um, I assume, from reading this that the same um, role that the ABC took back in tri-community group took back in when those variance hearings and permits were coming up with NIPDES and all the other acronyms for all the agencies that this is not in, um, encumbering them to necessarily do that but it's allowing them the opportunity should this group also want to um, go to the various hearings and represent as the ABC after a vote like that. Yeah, the same powers that were uh, allowed under the original agreement would continue under this agreement, so yes. Yeah, and with the caveat, it's not binding anybody. It may be that sometimes it happens, Arlington and Belmont goes in and we have those sort of kindred spirits in terms of you know, what we're asking for in Cambridge, which I totally respect and understand. Um, sometimes you know, we run parallel or a little bit of skew. So I just wanna make sure what we had before, which is I think what was said, said in here anyways, that opportunity exists and it's whether the ABC or Tri-Community wants to take advantage of it. Yes, that would continue. That's my only clarification. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Four zero. Thank you. Next up, we have the town manager's evaluation. So, uh, the town manager provided us with a narrative of his year's performance and reviewed the goals that we set with him uh, <coughs> mid last year or early last year, I guess. Um, and then each of us had an opportunity to review that. Then each of us wrote our own reviews, which were passed back to Karen uh, Malloy. And Karen Malloy combined all of those reviews into a document here, which uh, I you know, I reviewed and then passed along to everybody. Um, so it's a favorable review and I mean, it's a, the overall he received on a, his, most of the rankings are on a scale of one to, uh, uh, the rankings are all on a scale of one to five. And in each of the major areas he earned between a four and a five. So as, as a collective group, we are um, happy with the job that he's doing. As a personal matter, I'm delighted with the job that he's doing. Uh, I briefly uh, talked to the town manager because the other thing we, the, his contract permits us uh, to talk about, or not permit me, instructs us to talk about compensation adjustments at this time. And uh, I, uh, Adam and I uh, thought that a 2% raise might be the right uh, number for us to talk about, which is a half percent less than the, uh, the negotiated union rates are getting this year. And so I wanted to see if we, 
endorsed and accepted this, and if we wanted to go forward with that for uh, other thoughts that the board might have. Diane? Um, on the second point, yep. um, is that something either to, through the chair to the town manager or town council, acting town council, is that something we need to have as an agenda item or that we can vote on tonight? Something we need to go in an executive session and come out and vote it in public? Or do you know the process? Uh, my Are you asking for action on the second or 22%? I, am. So I, I am. just want to make sure. Yes. Uh, I guess I did consider the town manager's evaluation to be enough notice that that's what we are going to talk about. But if <coughs> there's concerns, then we can certainly bring that up in a, we can, you know, more explicitly title it in a future uh, meeting. I, um, oh, Frank, no, I'm, ha I'm happy. I, it's my, I would t I totally take responsibility for that because I'm the one who put this on the agenda. And if I didn't title it well, then that would be my mistake. I'm happy to do that tonight unless I hear anything to the contrary. Ed, you have, are you concerned? No, I'm not. I think it's uh, broad enough uh, in the agenda item uh, to bring up his, uh, his salary increase or adjustment. Okay. Um, Steve. Um, you know, after reading through all of our comments and you know, seeing the pretty high scores, um, as well as you know, you know, most of the comments and the 2% raise is you know, what everyone deems fair, I, I certainly think it is acceptable. Yeah. I, I would also concur. I, I also want to just say um, as an aside that I, I think we should uh, thank uh, Ms. Malloy for the excellent job she did on, on, on uh, collating these. This is actually a very useful instrument, I think, for, for us as well as I hope it's useful for the Extremely manager to have this, um, this feedback. So I'm happy to go along with the compensation. I would ask that um, when we get to the contract portion, which I know will be at a future meeting, <coughs> that you um, seek advice of counsel as to whether or not we should be listing that as uh, an executive session item for the board to discuss okay. be before going into public session on it where it's, it is a negotiation. Okay, you're right, Mr. Town. Yeah. That sounds, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Adam? Uh, I'll just say I, I, I do find it very useful and I really want to thank the board for taking the time. I know it's not, um, it's not easy to go through all of those areas and put comments down. Uh, but I find it very useful to go and see where, you know, wh where I am doing good work and I can continue in other areas where um, I need to shore up my performance and perform uh, better to meet the board's goals. So I find it to be very useful. And I, uh, I especially appreciate how time consuming it is now that um, uh, I've begun uh, the first formal uh, department head review process. So I, um, I'm feeling um, what you would have went through going through this. So I, I especially appreciate it based on that. Yeah. Um, th thank you, Adam. I've had, uh, as I have, having thought about it a little bit, I'm <coughs> in, in hearing both uh, what both of you said about this. I would think it would be our wh whatever raise we choose to give at whatever point is retroactive to February twenty second or something twenty fourth. It's actually today. Is it today? All right, there <laughs> we go. Happy happy anniversary. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so. I would be completely fine with delaying because we will be having a future di discussion talking about a contract. Is we could delay the raise until <coughs> that conversation and make it retroactive to, to today. And I think that that would probably be entirely appropriate as well. If the board's more comfortable with that, I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, I think it'd be great to have okay. a little bit of backup information. Okay. Um, so I'd like to, would you like move receipt of the um, 2014 town manager performance review? Um, I think we should act on it, but I think, do you want to do something a little bit more stronger than receive? Do you want to say, like, this is adopt uh, or okay, something? Yeah. Well, does anyone want to make that? I, I move acceptance. Okay. Uh, or endor endorsement. Yeah, I do. I, if it's, I mean, it's your motion, but that would be what I would I'm, do. I move to endorse the consolidated performance review as, as presented to us by the chair and Ms. Malloy. Okay. Thank of, you. Of the town manager. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? And just briefly, I also want to echo um, um, my thanks to Ms. Malloy. Um, I actually had to bother her off, her off hours when she was home with her family, um, and she certainly took the time. And I really feel, I almost feel like uh, I'm a reflected in almost every comment in here, um, which is a good thing yep. for me. Um, and I think she I did that too. with our colleagues also. So I think it's hard to balance five different personalities and five different comments. but. I definitely felt like um, not only, you know, did she take the time to read everything and encapsulate it, I certainly feel um, 
whatever comments I had were certainly contained in here. And, you know, I had a pretty strong voice in it, and I'm sure my colleagues feel the same. And I thank her for doing that, because I know with me, it's sometimes it's a little bit of an extra juggling act. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Uh, next up is Warren Article Six, and I see in the audience we've got this um, Dr. McQuillan from the Minuteman, mm -hmm. and seeing as we discussed it already, I'm suspecting that we can dispose of that relatively quickly, and I want to pull that one out of order if that seems okay. appropriate. All right, we're going to jump to Article 21. We're going to talk about the Minuteman Regional Agreement, and. Uh, at our last meeting, we had uh, Charlie Foskett, who's on the Regional Agreement Negotiating Committee, <coughs> share his thoughts, and we went through it in some detail, and uh, we talked about it. Um, so, Dr. McClellan, did you have anything in particular that you wanted to say, or were you here to answer questions, or? Thank you. I have nothing in particular to say. I'm here to answer questions. Mr. Foskett has done a great job representing Arlington and uh, I don't think I can add much to what he's already said, but I will clarify any questions that you may have. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, uh, Bill, I see you. Is there, uh, we've got a question in the audience. Is there any comment from the member of the committee we go to? Bill, come on up. Welcome. Thank you. Bill Hainer, uh, speaking as a town meeting member, I just want to ask you, is it the intent of, uh, to have this agreement sent out to all town meeting members a reasonable time before it comes before town meeting? Murray, what's the schedule, the printing and delivery schedule for the selectman's report? I'm Roughly. I'm hoping around the, let's see, town meeting starts on the 28th, right? Mm -hmm. 28th, I think it is. All right, so I would have it out the week before. Right after April 17th. Uh, I, I, I appreciate that. I, I don't know if it has to go with the whole, your whole uh, package. Because this is potentially uh, a hot button item, I think if the members of the town meeting have a chance to look at it and digest it, it may forestall uh, uh, some of the debate. Do you That's have uh, physical mailing in mind or email or both? What do you think? I personally love electronic. Yeah. Okay, and uh, you, you, I think if the majority, Whatever effort you can go forward, uh, I, either way, uh, like that. Uh, I think, I, I don't want to speak for town meeting members, but I think a, quite a few of us have profited our uh, email address on that. Yeah. And just a little something to, to have out there. I'd appreciate that. Okay. I could send this out before the whole yeah. report is sent out to all the town meeting members. If this is the agreement, you could do that earlier. If I you think that's the agreement. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I would add for any town meeting member here tonight or watching um, tonight, all of these documents are currently available on the Minuteman uh, website. So they're currently publicly available online, but we can certainly send a town meeting member email, uh, both with the attachments and directing folks uh, to the I, Minuteman, I, uh, Minuteman site. I appreciate that, but I think if it comes with your seal on it, it has a little more impact to, to pay attention to it. Okay. So no, no offense to, to the, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> okay. thank you. Point taken. Thanks. Mark, yeah, uh, Mark, could you come on up to the microphone, please? We have millions of viewers, Mark, they need yeah. to hear. I would hope that informa valuable information like that were available to residents so they can then contact their town meeting members and express their opinion on the, on the issue at hand. So thank you. I, I agree. Uh, so the, we'll definitely, as um, on the town website, uh, there's the town meeting section and there's reports to town meeting. And uh, this, uh, these documents will be placed there as well. Uh, so the Delphi would be available online in that in that uh, way. Um, so yes, so I definitely agree that <coughs> that and other reports are, are available at that location. Move favorable action for Article 21. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there anyone else in the audience who wanted to talk about it? Is there any further discussion from the board? Ed, do you think you, you've got everything you need to, for Doug to write the report? <laughs> I do indeed. <laughs> All right. Well, he was here last week. Yes, he was. Indeed. I just have this mental checklist. I have to always make sure the town council has done what we need. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Cologne.
All right, now we'll resume to our order. Article 10, Home Rule Legislation Cemetery Commission. So we've got... This is a 10 registered voter article. And we've got a memo from town council who is out of town today and being ably served by um, Ed Marlinga, who described and this, this Article 10 is Cemetery Commission to see if the town will vote to authorize and request the Board of Selectmen to file home rule legislation to amend the Town Manager Act to allow direct election of the Cemetery Commission upon a positive vote of the electorate. And, and so in our packet, we've got a memo from the Town Council. We've got some background material from, I think, the Manager and the Cemetery Commission and the first signatory of the 10 voter article, uh, Stephen Harrington. Um, anybody, Mr. Harrington, you're on. Good evening. I'm gonna read from my phone. So um, my name is Stephen Harrington. I'm a town meeting member representing precinct 13. Um, tonight, I represent, uh, I pre present to the board citizen initiated warrant article to town meeting. So I'm going to just talk through both of them. Before I begin, um, I request that you keep all your interruptions and questions until the end of the presentation. It's rather long. And um, I wanted to show pictures and video tonight to support my arguments. Um, but Mr. Dunn was concerned with the technical challenges, uh, both on display and cable cast a video and didn't think that the video would be appropriate or useful for the hearing. Um, so, you know, it's the 21st century, not really that hard to show pictures uh, on cable television. Uh, so instead of showing pictures that are worth a thousand words, I'm gonna have to suffer through speaking through about 5,000 words. Um, I'm backed into a corner, you know, it's standing at a microphone, no podium to put papers down. Um, not even a bottle of water, so. Um, however, uh, these two warrant articles, including one that changes the Town Manager Act, certainly deserve the board's attention for at least 15 minutes. And some of what I present might be embarrassing. Um, I'm embarrassed to have to be here. But the extreme nature of these articles, unfortunately, are supported by extreme behavior. Uh, for those viewers at home, who have access to the internet. Uh, my entire presentation, including those uh, challenging pictures and videos, can be found on truepersons.com. T-R-U-E, true in persons. There are two warrant articles in front of the board tonight that ask town meeting to remove the authority of the Board of Selectmen and the town manager in varying degrees over Mount Pleasant Cemetery. Of course, it is unlikely that the board will vote tonight to limit their authority. And a vote of no action will lead to a substitute motion at town meeting. Make no mistake, without action by the board and town manager, we will be discussing Mount Pleasant Cemetery in the spring with both the picture and videos. However, you have the last opportunity to act to head off the real possibility of losing all authority and control over Mount Pleasant Cemetery. So I'm gonna first start with the second article. I know that's not up until immediately after this one, so beg your indulgence. And uh, it's on the restrictions in parking in Mount Pleasant Cemetery, and to see if the town will vote to amend the bylaws to restrict parking. And the first article asked the town meeting to restrict parking in Mount Pleasant Cemetery. Uh, let me briefly review the record. Uh, two and a half years ago, I appeared before this board when Clarissa Rowe was the chair on the occasion of the sudden death of my brother to seek the board's help in ending the practice of cars driving across and parking on grave sites. In particular, several of my family members are buried in four contiguous sites along Satcham Ave. And um, as one person who signed um, a petition said, uh, deep ruts filled with rainwater along Satcham Ave with a fire truck and police park prevented family members, particularly those of us dressed for church, from having a reasonable passage to the gravesite 
for internment. It was deeply distressing and insulting. I was referred to the Cemetery Commission. Uh, the commission decided to place signs restricting parking on Satcham Ave. They're there today. Signs, they were a sham, and rarely, if ever, enforced over the next two years. Um, for a full history of this, you can go to that two persons website, there's a link there, with uh, pictures showing it. And you also have uh, the documents that you referenced earlier on in your packets under the uh, title Mount Pleasant Cemetery Municipal Parking Lot. <coughs> in it, you'll see dozens of pictures, including 10 ton fire trucks driving across grave sites, uh, daily parking of the private vehicles of fire and police personnel, construction equipment, contractors' trucks, all parking on Satcham Ave over a period of more than six years. The official record of the Cemetery Commission reveals that in 2007, parking was a long-standing problem. The current police chief, Fred Ryan, was asked to discuss the flow of traffic going through the cemetery. In 2010, the official Cemetery Commission record describes a parking of cars on the graves. In 2011, parking is still a big problem. And in 2012, discussed the parking problem over on Satcham Ave. In all, the Cemetery Commission discussed parking issues around Satcham Ave 20% of their meetings between 2007 and 2013. The photographic record shows from 2008 through, well, today, cars parked daily in the cemetery. As I said, today there's actually a fire truck and personal vehicle mark parked on Satcham Ave. Interesting, the chair of the cemetery commission was quoted in the Arlington Advocate on Thursday last week as saying, once the work was all said and done, the parking issue has actually disappeared and that the situation itself doesn't exist anymore. Since Mr. Dunn denied my request to show pictures that prove this Excuse most me, recent Mr. statement. Carrington, I just want to say I did not actually, uh, I said that you sh couldn't show video. I did in invite you to include pictures and pictures are included in the packet. I just wanted to be clear about that. Yeah, for the residents, for the millions at home watching. Indeed. So I instead of being able to show a picture, Mr. So Carrington, I did thank not you very say much. you could not bring pictures. Concerning cemetery parking is not supported by fact. Uh, there was a series of photos that you can see on two persons uh, covering the period from November 24th when the Mystic Street construction ended through February 13th, as recently as 10 days ago. Um, the picture shows um, on December 3rd, uh, six cars, three of them that I, I know of um, actually people who work in the public safety building. December 17th during a snowstorm, four or five more cars parked there. February 6th, four more cars parked there. <coughs> On February 6th at night, because I drove by that facility every single night for a couple months, um, at 8 p.m., uh, there's cars parked in the cemetery. Uh, the restriction is that there's uh, cemeteries closed from dusk to dawn. So it's a trespass. On February 11th, four cars are parked on Satcham Ave. February 11th at 2 o'clock, three of the same four cars are still there. So 8 o'clock in the morning, they're there. 2.30 in the afternoon, they're there. It goes on and on, February 12th. So for someone to say that it's not an issue, I think that um, the facts don't support that. Now I'll discuss my August interaction with the Cemetery Commission. Near the end of July, I went to visit my parents' grave to have some headstone work to uh, have some names engraved. Uh, it was impossible to park near the grave site. I counted over 40 vehicles parked inside the cemetery along and adjacent to Satcham Ave. Private vehicles, construction dump trucks, municipal employees' private vehicles, a large open truck piled high with junk. Below are some quotes from residents who notice the same thing. My mother and father's grave are right there, and as you drive in, it is hard to stop and say a prayer for them or to put out plants. I have relatives in four of the graves on the left as you enter the cemetery from the police station side of the cemetery. The barriers have helped some, but it's unsightly and intrusive for fire trucks and town vehicles to be parked there so often when you visit during the day. I too have family and friends buried directly on the streets where the city workers park. I had an injury and walking long distances that di were difficult for me for quite a while, and it was near impossible to park to go visit my family and friends' graves. There's dozens of comments like this. 
I came before the board that very night during public participation to complain about the ongoing parking issue in the cemetery. The board did not respond. The next day I asked to be placed on the agenda for the next cemetery commission meeting and attended the August 14th meeting. I arrived by bike, I was in shorts and a t-shirt, just a bike helmet and sneakers. I was pretty well uh, um, unobtrusive. And um, I was met there by the commissioners, cemetery staff, uh, Fire Chief Bob Jefferson, Assistant Town Manager Andrew Flanagan, DPW Director Mike Rademacher, and DPW Operations Manager Jim, Hodge, Jim Dodge. Uh, later, we were joined by Mrs. Hassler's husband, Jim Hassler. There were four department heads at this Sleepy Cemetery Commission meeting. I informed the chair of the commission that I'd be recording the meeting as is the, my right according to Mass General Law. And three times she said I couldn't, I suggested she check with town council. The meeting started at 9.15 a.m. And I think it was very important that we show um, this video because I'll just play it uh, so you'll hear it. Sorry, Mr. Harrington. I don't think it's appropriate for us to have video being shown at this. You were asked, uh, I told you that in writing, or excuse me, the office staff told you that in writing before the meeting. Um, could you please stop the video and continue with your presentation? So Ms. Hassler tried to violate my civil rights. She then went on and lied to the Arlington police, filed a false police report with them. They came down with three police officers to intimidate me, and at no time did I disrupt this meeting, at no time. You don't want people to see this video, Mr. Dunn, because it clearly shows that I did not disrupt this meeting. Ms. Hassler further went on and wrote to the Attorney General testimony that said that I was unresponsive, that I disrupted the meeting. I read the law before the, she stormed out of the room. Chief Jefferson came back in with the two police officers. I'm stunned that four department heads were unaware that public meetings could be recorded and that they sat there with three other police officers behind me while the chair of the cemetery commission acted in a rude and demanding, demeaning manner. So I contacted the Board of Selectmen and I asked to be placed on the agenda to speak about this. And this brings me really to the second warrant article, the Home Rule Legislation, to change the Cemetery Commission from being appointed to elected. Because really this isn't about Ms. Hassler or about me. This is about <coughs> your, the Board's response to this situation. So the reason I'm asking town meeting to start the process to rescind the selectman's authority is threefold. The subsequent action of the board of selectmen after the August meeting, the continued improper use of the cemetery, and the failure of the cemetery commission to perform its fiduciary responsibilities. Immediately after Mrs. Hassler's behavior in August, I requested to be on the board of selectmen's agenda. Mr. Dunn responded. Chairman Daniel Dunn has determined that this request will not be an agenda item on Monday, August 19th. After you decided not to allow me to speak to this, I made a formal complaint to the board. You all received that complaint, I know. Marie sent it out to all of you. So I won't bother to read through it. I never heard a word. At that same time, Mr. Dunn received another complaint about Mrs. Hassler as chair of the Cemetery Commission, which reads in part, this is from an elected official in Arlington. In my 20 years as a town meeting member, I have dealt with appointed members from every board and commission in town. Some are better than others. But I've counted on these folks to be civil and thoughtful, even when we have substantive disagreements. That has not been the case with Mrs. Hassler. 
During the time the Cemetery Commission was looking to convert Cook's Hollow into a cemetery, Ms. Hassel was scolding and outright nasty. She told me I didn't understand the zoning bylaw, that I was deliberately misleading town meeting, and I shouldn't even dare to disagree with the decisions of the Cemetery Commission. Her behavior on Mr. Harrington's videos was pristine and polite when compared to the encounters I had off camera. I question if she has the demeanor required to serve on a board that needs to be responsive to the residents of the town. Immediately after this, the board voted to put the matter to the town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, and no time after that did Mr. Chapdelaine contact me. I'm unaware of any subsequent action relating to my complaint or to the complaints of elected officials concerning Ms. Hasler's inappropriate behavior. I have no indication that any other complaints received were shared with either the rest of the board or the second plane, even with the town manager. This is the first reason the board should lose authority over the cemetery commission. A lack of response by the manager and this board on legitimate complaints about appointees under their control. Appointees who make misleading statements on simple matters of fact, are rude and nasty to residents and elected officials, attempt to deny residents the exercises of their civil rights, who defame residents in official testimony and make false statements to the Arlington police to use them to intimidate those who might complain about their misdeeds. This brings me to the second point. We've discussed the use of Mount parking lot, but that is not the only improper use that has resulted in extensive damage. In addition to employees parking their private vehicles in the cemetery, residents use Satcham Ave as a cut through to avoid traffic at the Chestnut Mystic Street intersection. If you remember, this was discussed by the Cemetery Commission in 2007. At this point, I'd be showing pictures and video of this practice. On February 11th and 12th of this year, around 8 a.m., I collected a series of photos showing an average of one car per minute entering or exiting Satcham Ave. Positioning cameras and comparing the distances involved in the timestamps in the pictures, suggests that the average speed through the cemetery exceeds 30 miles an hour. <coughs> I have 10 photos I'd show as a sample of them. So in addition to passenger vehicles, I've had pictures of FedEx trucks, construction vehicles, box trucks, regularly used Mount Pleasant Cemetery as a cut through. The only route through the cemetery passes over a nine foot wide wooden bridge that spans about 20 feet of the Mill Brook. Um, you could see from this photo below the damage a large vehicle recently did to the wooden guardrail on that bridge. Um, both this high all the way down. The compromised wooden road surface of the bridge and the inappropriate chain link fence that would fail to protect any vehicle from going over the embankment. Combined with an average of one vehicle a minute passing over the bridge during rush hours, you have the recipe for a needless tragedy. The bridge in Mount Pleasant Cemetery is the sole responsibility of the town of Arlington according to the Mass DOT. Mr. Chapdelaine, this is a public records request. For all inspections, the dates on which they were performed, and any written report of that bridge over the last five years. Mr. Harrington, do you intend to plan that in, put that records request in writing? I'll send an email to him. Mr. Harrington, I just want to say, you did say that you'd take I thought I'd, I'd, I asked him, I asked uh, not to interrupt at the end. Me. Sir, excuse me, sir? No, Mr. Harrington, excuse me. I'm the chair. I would like to address you briefly. You said that you were going to take 15 minutes. We're passing 17. Do you have, actually, much lo longer than that. Do you have a sense of how much long more you have to say? So in addition to the photos below, the marks over the grave master. Mr. Harrington, do you have a right sense of edge. how much more you have to say? Yeah, I'm almost done. Thank you. In addition to the photos below, you can see that a grave marker right at the bottom of that bridge had tire marks across it and chips throughout it. This brings me to the last point of why you should lose the authority over the Cemetery Commission. It's just not just failure to supervise an improper use of the cemetery, but another important reason the board should lose authority is due to several breaches of fiduciary duty. Anyone who walks through Mount Pleasant Cemetery soon realizes <coughs> the road surface is horrible. 
The edges along the roads in the old section are rutted. The edges in the section along Satcham Ave have been compromised by vehicles encroaching on the grassy area and onto the grave sites. Large swaths of the cemetery, especially over by the veteran section, are covered by dirt with no grass whatsoever. The cemetery commission should be ashamed of the Memorial Day services that they provide. My father, a veteran, with a site along Satcham Ave, has only once had his grave marked with a flag. What people may not realize is that Mount Pleasant Cemetery is a revenue source for the town of Arlington. Several years ago, most of the cemetery staff was laid off in maintenance services, grass mowing mostly, outsourced to the lowest bidder. The result was that the cemetery became a cash flow positive and that the condition of the cemetery deteriorated rapidly. In comparison to other local cemeteries, Mount Pleasant Cemetery is a not nice place. Gravesite fees are high, lot size is small, burial services expensive. When graves are purchased, funds are deposited into a revolving account. As well, a $500 fee is assessed and deposited into the Perpetual Care Trust Fund. The Perpetual Care Trust Fund is controlled by mass law. Inspection of the town's general ledger indicates that principal has been dispersed in excess of income received for expenses not directly related to the cemetery operation. Instead of using income or disbursements from the Graves revolving account to fund more maintenance, over the past five years, about $100,000 a year has been diverted from the cemetery revenues into the DPW's general budget and not spent on maintenance. As well, we've seen the Cemetery Commission have several initiatives to spend that money on projects that amount to landscape design. Two weeks ago, I asked Town Manager Chapter Lane and Finance Committee Tost Chair Tosti about warrant articles for appropriations for the cemetery. They told me there was nothing new should be the same as last year. So imagine my surprise when the Alton Advocate quoted the Chair of the Cemetery Commission saying an appropriation for $250,000 for another landscape design project was being requested through the warrant articles Mr. in front Herrick. of town meeting. Mr. Harrington, you've been going for 20 minutes. Do you think you could wrap up in three? Do you think that, Mr. Dunn, do you yes. think that a change to the Town Manager Act shouldn't hold your attention for 15 or 20 minutes? I, in fact, believe it has held my attention for both. So I'm at my conclusion. So if you'd stop interrupting me, I would be done at this point. Thank you. So this board has a choice tonight. It is a foregone conclusion that you'll not vote to limit your authority, but that does not mean you should not act. Stop the inappropriate use of the cemetery as a cut through and as a municipal parking lot. Put a gate at Satcham Ave. Direct the chief of police to enforce cemetery regulations. As Mr. Chaplain told the advocate, you and the cemetery commission have the authority to end these practices. Act now or risk losing that authority. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Harrington. Are there any comments from the board before we go to the audience? Um, just Ms. one Lamar. question. Um, I, I have about, I think if I added them up correctly, nine or ten um, citations from residents um, regarding ruts, regarding quotes. Um, do we have any names of who the residents are or just representations? Mr. Harrington, Mr. Dunn, you received every one of those. You were on the change.org petition, were you not? Uh, I do remember seeing some spam from them. Mr. Yes. Dunn received every single one of those. You should ask him to share it with the board. I'm, I'm just asking as your presentation. If you don't have any, that's fine. I'm just asking if you do. Every single quote that I gave is a resident of the town of Arlington. They provided their name. These are anonymous quotes. Mr. Dunn has that information. Thank you. He has yeah. not shared it with the board. I'd like to ask the board a question. The answer is no. No, no. Mr. Harrington. I, know, I don't cede my time. I, I sat here for 26.34 minutes. Um, so I just, when representation, there's just the court reporter in me. I made it from the microphone. Normally we do ask that whoever's presenting them, because um, I, you know, I could get up and yeah. say things. So I just wanted to clarify that for the record, that I don't have that available. Thank you. Any questions from the board before I go to the audience? I'd like to hear from the audience. Joe? Sorry, I'd like to hear from you. I apologize. Let me see. Is there anyone else who would like to hear to talk about, um, in particular, I would like to talk, limit ourselves if we can to Article 10, which is talking about the Cemetery Commission. Mr. Langone, come on up. <coughs> good, after, uh, good evening. My name is Richard Langone. I'm a resident of 12 Swan Place. I, um, I'd like to speak about the parking, 
in the cemetery. As you know, the residents of Arlington were held to a different standard of parking and the town employees are held to a different standard. There's two different standards of parking, one for the taxpayer and the other one for the employees. But the taxpayers, we have to pay, our residents of Swamp Place have to pay an overnight parking fee to park in this town. And we were told that we were put under that situation to be equal with everybody else. But I guess everybody else isn't the town employees. That's a separate category. And that's the problem with the Cemetery Commission, the way she treated Mr. Harrington. I've seen the video. She was arrogant, and the arrogance comes from the people that appointed her. The first time I came to this chamber, I was treated poorly. I was asking questions. I had never been in this chamber before, and I was treated like I shouldn't even be asking questions. As a matter of fact, they shut the cameras off and you walk out the door on. You wonder why people are getting fed up with it because we, just, we want respect just like you want respect. In this whole situation, the parking at the cemetery is more about not respecting what the people of the town want. And the people of the town want it to stop. And it's very simple to stop it. You have the power to do it, but you don't do it because it's that arrogance where how dare the people of this town tell us what to do. Well, it's got to the point now where we're gonna bang heads over things because people are getting fed up with it. And I'm fed up with it. And I think if you're gonna enforce parking on the citizens, you ought to enforce parking across the board. It isn't an entitlement because you work in this town that you're entitled to park wherever you want. You, if you're gonna put the citizens on the the knife, then everybody else ought to be treated the same way. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Mr. Harrington, uh, sorry, Sean Harrington. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sean Harrington, Precinct 15. First, sorry I wasn't here earlier. My mom was locked out of her house, so I had to help out with that. Um, not to beat a uh, point senseless, but I think that we saw a great example of um, the need for proper respect during a meeting um, when, pe when one is uh, in charge of a meeting in the sense that well, why this issue I think really came up uh, to refer to someone's uh, emails as spam or to overpower them with, um, with yelling is not a proper way to handle a meeting whether you disagree with someone or not. Mr. Harrington, do you have a comment on the actual article that we're talking about? The comment on the article is that the issue I see here is politeness from our or from committee chairs, from people who work for us, our hired help, our elected help. And in this case, I think we have seen a perfect example of which why we should have an appointed board. The fact that respect is needed, and when respect is not needed, um, major, dis major changes should be made to stop the disrespect and to stop rudeness and proper chairmanship of meetings. Thank you. We will continue with an appointed board, perhaps, then. Um, is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Mr. Kepline. Hi, Mark Kepline, Precinct 7. I just, quick clarification. Um, the alternatives to a selectman appointed board is an elected board, or would it be uh, decided by town meeting? Uh, so, realistic, the, the way the way most of the the, select, the hearings work is that uh, when a, a ten registered voter article or something brought forward by a department head is that uh, sometimes the proposal will include what the recommendation is, but either way the the selectman will discuss it, will make a will vote a recommendation, then that'll go to town council, will actually write up what the actual proposed vote is, then that comes back to us for approval. So realistically, in this particular situation, the board could either recommend no action or could go along with the discussion of, as suggested by the 10 registered articles, to make it um, a, uh, a, ch a home rule petition, or we could theoretically recommend a proposed vote of some third choice. Did I I don't, I'm not sure if that answers my question. Okay, I apologize. So if, if the selectmen didn't appoint the Cemetery Commission. Oh, you mean in general? Well, we the would they become elected on the on the ballot? No. Uh, if what would have to happen is uh, 
to change the way the Cemetery Commission works is that we would have to have a home rule petition. Mm -hmm. And that home rule petition would, the, the most expected outcome would be making it an elected position where it would be on the ballot and it would be on the April ballot. But you would, uh, the home rule petition, you could do it, you know, and y that home rule petition could say anything. But uh, the election certainly makes sense as the next uh, most okay, obvious choice. Okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to understand. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Is there further discussion from the audience? Seeing none, Mrs. Mahan. Um, on Article 10, I would like to move no action. Um, I'll try to keep my remarks brief. Um, first and foremost, um, the video referenced um, by the proponent um, is available on the site that he cited um, because at all times he there was a video of it. Um, the Attorney General reviewed the, examined the video um, it, of the meeting in question, conducted interviews um, of various parties and determined that the Cemetery Commission did not violate the open meeting law. And I would say if, if the video wasn't allowed to be performed, we wouldn't have it as a reference material as cited before. And then the other thing that we do have in our packet that I'll just encapsulate briefly is that um, it has listed Cemetery Commission for comparable communities of Arlington, Belmont, Brookline, Cambridge, Lexington, Medford, Melrose, Milton, Natick, Needham, North Andover, Reading, Somerville, Stoneham, Watertown, Winchester. Currently, um, before um, town meeting, here's this uh, warrant article on a possible substitute motion. If I'm successful, of all those communities, only one have an elected um, cemetery commission, as well as all the other backup materials that we have from the proponent, as well as other named department heads and people that I can, that I've conducted outreach for. For all those reasons, I would recommend no action. We have a motion, is there a second? I will second it. Second, Steve. Um, and and I'll, I'm gonna second it for a couple of reasons. Um, the first of which is that we've actually received very few complaints regarding uh, Mount Pleasant um, Cemetery. And when we do make these appointments, it's done in an open process, it's done in an open meeting, and yet, uh, you know, these appointments aren't contested. You know, there isn't a line of uh, individuals speaking about these appointments, which there could be in which, you know, if there was perhaps, um, you know, that would change my vote on these appointments. So um, regardless that uh, I, I just don't, you know, while I understand uh, these complaints, I think that um, in the past there, has been very limited discussion on this, and I think that um, changing um, the cemetery commission to an elected board really is unnecessary if there is more discussion during the appointment process, which is uh, very much a, you know, there is an opportunity for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go with Joe. Sure, sure. Joe. Uh, I'll be supporting the, m the motion of no action. I'll, I'll be supporting it for a little bit of a different reason, um, though. It's, you know, I've sat there, I've had disputes with appointed boards, and I've actually <laughs> wondered if maybe we shouldn't be looking at an elected board. But on further reflection, you know, I realize there's a difference between the Board of Selectmen and something like the Cemetery Commission or the Redevelopment Board or the Zoning Board of Appeals or the Conservation Commission or the Historic Districts Commission or whatnot. We are, by necessity, we're generalists, and we run that way. When we run for election, we run and we reach out to, to uh, constituencies across the board. We're looking for very specific expertise um, when we look to, to fill these appointments. Sometimes we don't have you know, a pool of candidates to choose from, but I would submit that we would have an even narrower pool if um, somebody knew that to put themselves forward to be a member of the Cemetery Commission or one of the other commissions that I put forward that they would have to go out and raise money and and take months away from their family to, to be able to provide that service. So I, I feel uncomfortable cherry picking one commission. I understand there we all, all have at one time or another I'm sure have had uh, disputes and disagreements with various uh, elected and appointed boards in town but I feel that cherry picking one and saying let's let's make that uh, elected when we have so many others that, that make up our town manager act right now it just it's not um, prudent policy Ms. Greeley yeah my apologies that um, I was late getting here uh, 
how I wish I could have heard the presentation, but I'm going to support the move for no action. I think we have an excellent cemetery commission, and I think the fact that in my 25 years, this is the first complaint that's been brought against them is testimony to the kind of work these appointees have done for them. I support them. Uh, I'm also going to support the motion. I, I think for, and I, I think I've agree, I agree with, I believe um, everything that my colleagues have said on this issue. Uh, is there any further discussion? All those in favor of Mr. Mahong's vote, a, a motion of no, recommending no action on Article 10, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. Next up is Article 12, which is, we've been obviously discussing significantly already, which is the parking restriction. Um, anyone from the board before I go to the audience? Is there anyone here who specifically wanted to talk about Article 12 and the parking? Seeing none, is there a discussion or a motion? Mr. Kaplan, do you want to come on to the mic? Mark Kaplan, Precinct 7. Uh, Mr. Byrne uh, mentioned about, uh, you know, objections to appointments, and I, I'm not sure, I don't understand what the process is for doing that. For example, in the appointment tonight, it's not part of the open, the public hearing, and no comments are allowed. So there's no opportunities for objections um, to appointments. I guess I uh, so we do definitely do have public comments that happen during that. And uh, it's also, we receive um, both written and we have people approach us during, uh, before meetings about things that are on the agenda and things. Uh, we also, excuse me, uh, receive correspondence periodically. So there's actually, we get a fair amount of feedback on those. I, okay, so it doesn't sound like there's a formal process, however. Well, I, there I is, like, in this particular case, the formal process is the trustees are recommended by the town manager Town manager. So when there's an, uh, a vacancy, or the town manager chooses, you know, we publish the, the the vacancy, and he can interview and do whatever he wants. And then it comes before us to approve that recommendation. So I would disagree. There is a process. Well, you didn't recognize me when I asked, uh, raised my hand for the appointment to the tra transportation advisory committee. For it's this a number of issues. Uh, first, it says open term. This isn't on twelve, no, is no. it, sir? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. That's a good. Uh, we are, like. Turn. So we're trying to talk about the parking now. I so. know, yeah. I know, but again, I'm just saying there's no there's no forum for 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 <coughs> objecting to or questioning, Mr. you know, appointments. I, That's what I I'm will saying. also point out that in the 2013 we had a number of open forum uh, during the citizens forum talking about appointees that the selectmen make. So I, I just it has happened on a number of occasions, okay. but I do want to move on and really talk about the parking. Thank you. All right, I'll speak with the, I guess, the town uh, legal. The town manager would be an excellent person to talk well, about. There's violations of the laws too here. You, you say open Roger. term and it's not a life sentence. Mr. It's uh, a four Mr. year term. Mr. Kaplan, we're and trying you've to talk got members for 12, 12 years who've never had their terms expire and renewed. Mr. Kaplan, we're trying to talk about Article 12. Thank you. Mr. Harrington, second time. Not very polite. Um, Stephen Harrington, town meeting member, precinct 13. When Ms. Hassler was reappointed, was it done through a um, consent agenda item? Mr. Chairman, can I say, I think this is beyond the scope. Which we, we, you were just, Mr. I'm Burns just, made a comment, me, and I'm, I'm replying me. to Mr. It, Burns' it, comment. The, to interrupt me, why don't you wait until I finish? Excuse me, I had the floor, Mr. Harrington. I sat and listened he to you. He gave me the floor. Excuse me, Mr. Harrington. I listened to you for 26 minutes and 34 seconds. I did not cede my time. It was time for comments from members of the Board of Selectmen. I'm asking the Chairman of Town Council. We have dispensed with Article 10. We now are on Article 12. I think any discussion regarding the cemetery, any cemetery commissioners under Article 10 is not appropriate now that we've moved on to Article 12. I, I Cleverly done. Thank you. Is there any further comment about Article 12? Okay, I'll just. No, I'm, no excuse me. It's Mark, <coughs> thank you, we've already Pardon heard. Me. Is there a motion? Mr. Greeley. Yes, I move no action on Article 12. Um, Second. It's an unnecessary, Second. first of all, the um, commission regulates parking. There is already restrictions, parking only for cemetery business. They can't restrict it any further than that. And since this has come up, I've ridden through that cemetery about 20 times. I yet to find a car parked there. As all this evidence has pointed out, all of the construction that took place at the time 
uh, caused that to happen, and, and that's a shame. Uh, this board actually had uh, curbing put in there to when uh, someone came before us and complained that cars were parking on the lawn too close to graves and stuff. So we try to be responsive, but this is a totally unnecessary move, no action. Mm -hmm. We have a motion, and uh, Mrs. Mahan, you have a second. Is there further discussion? Yeah. Uh, uh, is there, uh, then I'll, let's come to a vote. All those in favor of the motion of no action, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Next up is Article 20. Come on up. Just pull the mic. Yeah. You'll pardon me while we, I think, take a breath a little bit. Uh, so, Article 20 is um, bylaw amendment tar free, excuse me, tar sands <coughs> oil free Arlington. It is a 10 registered voter article. Uh, we have a <coughs> memo from town council talking about it, and uh, there definitely is, I believe, I mean, there would be difficulty in uh, actually making this as a bylaw change, but I understand it from correspondence received. Uh, from you that we're talking about a resolution which is often ruled in order by the moderator. That's obviously the moderator's choice, not ours, but my experience is, is that he'd accept it. So uh, I, I think uh, we'd love to hear from you about what I'm assuming is, <laughs> given the pa paperwork you provided us, a resolution. Yes, my name is Gina Slender, and this is the not a town meeting member, I'm just a concerned citizen. And um, my proposal is to put forth a resolution uh, to town meeting um, supporting a tar sands oil free Arlington. Um, and that, that would mean that um, as, as a town, we would take a stance um, to say that um, <coughs> we would like to keep Arlington free of ta tar sands oil. That's oil that's a very heavy oil that comes from um, both Western Canada, and there is some in the United States, but it's primarily from Western Canada. Um, and to say that um, we're in opposition to the supply and transport of that tar sands product and their derivatives into or through New England. Um, the goal, the goal of this is to, um, in the short term, have Arlington join and encourage other municipalities in the region to oppose tar sands oil coming into the Northeast. Right now, there is very little um, that comes into our region of, of the U.S. About 1% of the oil we use is blended um, in, in, uh, with tar sands derived oil, um, but um, there is also in, in the um, proposal a three-year phase-in for this, um, for, for um, so, um, saying that the, there should be a regional rejection of tar sands oil as an energy source and um, hopefully a state legislation requiring public disclosure of transport and heating fuel greenhouse gas intensity. That's life cycle intensity. Um, so it's not just the emissions that come from <coughs> cars that are here, but um, when they, as from extraction to um, use. Um, and uh, there are several precedents for this. Um, locally, the, uh, um, in 2000, Arlington joined the International Cities for Climate Protection campaign through a vote by this board um, committing itself to reducing local emissions of greenhouse gases. And then in 2007, the Board of Selectmen endorsed the um, Arlington, sus the, um, Arlington <coughs> Sustainable um, Um, 
and it's sustainable. Yeah, yeah. Sustainable. Sen sustainable energy part one that set goals of reducing our local greenhouse gases emissions by 12% um, in 2015. So those two things have already come through um, the town. Um, in the state, n Brookline passed a resolution in 2013 um, saying, saying that they oppose tar sands oil um, transmission and the Commonwealth <coughs> of Massachusetts adopted <coughs> their regional um, climate action plan um, and it's known as REGI. Um, the, then regionally, uh, Vermont and Maine have passed um, resolutions in, in 26 towns in Vermont and about six towns in Maine. And um, the New England governors and Eastern Ca Canadian pr premiers um, climate action plan in 2001 set goals of reducing greenhouse gas emissions to 10% below the 1990 levels by 2020. Um, globally, the um, European Union has a low carbon fuel standard, a fuel quality directive, and is now banning imports of tar sands oil. So as you can see, I'm working from our town out to the region, out to the country, and then um, further out to the world. So I can see, I, I would like to see Arlington take a leadership role here and um, consider this resolution to have um, Arlington declared a tar sands free region and then have that grow into a, a greater movement. So. Thank you. Questions, comments? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Andre, for yeah. coming, coming forward um, with this. Um, it's a little difficult for me because I have a lot of respect for, for you and for all the peace and social justice work you've done in, in the town. Um, and I, I think you've been involved in resolutions that have come before a town meeting before. You, have, you haven't? No. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize then. Um, I think that you know, I think I'm on a lot of the same wavelength with you as far as the, the concern around this. But over the, the past years, there's been kind of a growing concern also within the town meeting space as to what we should appropriately put forward for a town meeting to, 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 um, to take up and spend time in um, debate on. And a lot of times these have become you know, time consuming and, and, and divisive. So I just, I just wanna just, I, I think your idea of starting locally and trying to move out to the global space is a smart one. I just wanna um, <coughs> list off a few things that are coming top of mind. I know the manager will have a few others that I, I think we could s continue to support locally through town meeting and through this body and the manager. You're probably aware that, that Arlington was one of the leaders in the state when the solarized mass effort came through. We were one, I don't know if we were the top community for sign-ups on that, but we were one of the top communities in, in the Commonwealth. We're underway right now trying to do um, install solar panels on some municipal buildings. Um, we hired a regional energy manager with another community. We've gone for and received uh, green building grants at some of the municipal buildings. Uh, town meeting funded an energy efficiency fund a couple of years ago. We've switched over to LED lighting with a lot of savings actually in the, in the budget this year, not only energy savings mm -hmm. and such. And I only mention that because I, I feel that um, with a lot of what town meeting is trying to deal with, even we take, for example, some of the other warrant articles we, we, we talked about this evening, even though I may have disagreed with the proponent I, I recognize that, that these are issues of, of local local governance that we were uh, talking about. And my, so my own feeling is I don't think that I can, I can support this mm -hmm. for going before town meeting for that reason. I think if we were more locally focused on the specific actions that we could take as a, as a local government body, I might. However, what I might suggest that you consider, and, I, and this has been done at town meeting um, in past years, is you know every session does have a, an announcements and resolutions section and the moderator has given latitude in the past for proponents of resolutions to come forward and 
put these forward and invite all town meeting members who are interested in signing on to do so and making space available uh, behind the hall. So you, you may actually have a path to a majority without <coughs> potentially um, sidetracking the, the, the meeting itself. And I just, I put that forward. I mean, I personally, it's not, it's not a perfect analog, but personally, I've had success with this in the past. Um, seven years ago, we had an outbreak of um, um, anti-Semitic anonymous hate um, um, mail that was being directed towards some of our public officials and others. And I came forward before town meeting, it was when I was chairing the Human Rights Commission, and I surfaced this issue and invited those who wanted to sign on to an open letter. And we got thousands of people who signed mm -hmm. on uh, to the open letter. But it, it was a way to do it without, I, I think, um, potentially sidetracking town meeting. Because I read through this, and, I, and I'm absolutely with you on the, on the goal, <coughs> but there are a lot of assertions in the resolution that require a lot of independent research that I think that, that I get a sense that a lot of members might be uncomfortable with. And I, I'd hate to see the message diluted by a protract, protracted debate along those lines when um, there are ways to, 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 to educate the town meeting members and also solicit their support without going away. So unfortunately, I won't be able to support the, the resolution going forward for, the, for those reasons. And it's killing me to, to, to say that because I really respect the work that you've, you've done on it and the material you've put in. Kevin? Yeah. Um, thank you. You really have it's an impressive amount of work which you have done. But um, at this point, I just move that uh, we move receipt at this point in time. I, is, so, that might be, yeah. Are you, are you, we're not taking a position on it by moving receipt. So, are, are you, is your intention then to put forward in the selectman's report that you, we'd move, like, a recommended mm -hmm. vote of receipt? Because this is what we're gonna, yeah. because we're trying to figure out what we're gonna put in the selectman's report for town meeting. That's an excellent point, Mr. Chairman. I'm glad you're in that seat. <laughs> I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna withdraw my motion and see what my colleagues come up with. I was trying for us not to have to uh, yes. outright reject it, no action, yeah. and I'm certainly not ready to move favorable action on it. Diane. Um, I'm just trying to think of what we've done, we've done in past practice. When we had the Patriot Act, when we had I don't know if it was corporal punishment. I'm no, going to say it wrong. Whole, yeah. mm -hmm. um, we had Spank. We had, we had um, Citizens yeah. United. We, right. we also had the, the National Guard. With, exactly. uh, and what, what we've done, which is what I think the course that we're asking, um, I'm, I blanked Sandra, on Gina's Sandra. last, Ms. Sandra's, um, <laughs> is that when they've come before us saying we want this as a Warren article, a bylaw, we've deemed that it really isn't appropriate. You can do a resolution. And what we've done is while we haven't supported the initial request to make this a bylaw, a Warren article, I mean, Warren article that turns into a bylaw, but what we've done is we've recommended um, with the town moderator's approval that this be put forth for town meeting as a resolution only. I think that that is what Ms. Saunders has moved towards already. Right, so I, I That just was my original intent. Right, intent. and, and I, I, I was wondering if we could follow just that same course where it's, you know, the moderator rules it in order and he, he lets the person proponent <coughs> give the resolution and he makes it very clear that it really isn't it unless it's a strongly debatable I'd like to follow the same course that you know the original action we're not approving but we do recommend favorable action this coming through town meet to town meeting through the town moderator as a resolution so what's the selectman's report say on that Jim <coughs> that ultimately um, we would recommend favorable favorable action um, that this be reported as a resolution to town meeting with the town moderator's approval, as we've done in the past with the other citations. It just seems to me we're saying we support the resolution by doing that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move right. no action. Sorry, right. I'm going to move no action. I'm going to second it. It doesn't. You still can go to the moderator. You still can bring a resolution before town meeting. Uh, yeah. So sorry. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but yeah. I am. But I think we actually took no actions on that. I, I could be remembering incorrectly. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure I'm wrong too. But <laughs> so I'm going to move no action. All right. We have, did, did you have a comment? Or? Yeah. Other than I wish there was a better way forward as well. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I guess uh, I, I feel that that unlike some of the other um, things that have come before you, this does directly um, impact Arlington. 
Um, I think that um, in order to meet your greenhouse gas initiatives, that you're going to want to have something that says that um, this kind of fuel is not brought into town. Um, I hope that within the next three years, perhaps the, the board considers it differently um, as we don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, I see uh, an, uh, a hand raised, Mark. Standard for for these sort of articles is how you know to what effect do they directly improve the health, safety, <coughs> and welfare of Arlington residents, and and something like a ban, some sort of enforcement strategy. You know, put it into real country terms is how how is this going to benefit Arlington residents, and if it's not a local issue that you doesn't have some kind of measurable impact, then it's really not the business of town meeting in, in Arlington local government to address. So, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who wanted to speak on this issue? Come on up. Welcome. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Lynette Culverhouse, and um, I want to thank Gina for her work on this. I feel like it's really important. Um, I think I speak for many um, parents and grandparents in the town who have serious concern for the future of their children, and I would love to see Arlington take some strong leadership on this issue. I think that the little-known story about the small people along the route of the pipeline that carries these tar sands oil is not heard, and there are people dying as a result of the toxicity of the running water, of their drinking water, of the seepage into the agricultural land and the, the cattle and um, the feeding stock on the land um, are getting contaminated. And um, it, it's, it really feels like to me it's time for us to take a strong stand. And I, I understand where you're all coming from, but um, this does affect us in Arlington mm -hmm. and it, it's going to affect our children even more than it's affecting us. And um, you know our, our elected um, state legislator Sean Garbley is supporting this warrant, and um, I really would love to urge you to reconsider supporting it. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wants to speak on this issue? Um, Adam. <coughs> the only thing I might suggest, um, <coughs> hearing that the board in concept supports the issues raised by Ms. Sonder, uh, but has concerns about the, both the format of the resolution at town meeting and what actionable items might actually be before town meeting. Um, it, it seems that one of Ms. Sonder's most uh, tangible uh, statements in the resolution is the three-year time uh, limit to, to limit the sale and transport of tar sands-based oils in Arlington. Perhaps if the board is interested, uh, Ms. Sonder could work with some town staff over the course of perhaps the next year to really drill down on what actions Arlington could take and, and perhaps come back with a more a uh, direct recommendation next year if that's something the board's interested in. And, and I say that based on I'm not sitting here tonight very comfortable with what the practicalities of achieving some of these goals might actually be. Thank you. Um, I did, my, myself, I did have, want to weigh in and that is that I, I is exact or very similar to the way Joe describes his struggle with uh, resolutions at town meeting. Uh, I think that t I w I'm a passionate believer in the power of town meeting and how important it is to the community and governance of Arlington. And one of the things that I worry about is that we, by making the meeting longer, we reduce the number of people who will volunteer. I think we lose important people in town meeting because it just goes on for, for days. And so I just think about the people in that room and I try to jealously protect their time and protect it such that in a way that it's only going to, that talks about things that, um, and, and I, I essentially draw the line for myself w at when the, the less concrete it is, the more appropriate I think it is. And so this isn't about the content in, because if you look at my blog and how I voted on resolutions, I, I think there's, there might be one that I broke down and voted in support of regardless of what, but I just say no because I don't want to talk about them because I want to stick with the stuff that we have to. So that's why I'll be supporting Mr. Greeley's motion. Kevin. But I, I think it's a wonderful step that 
uh, the town manager has uh, recommended, uh, and I, I think it's wonderful that he will look into us. And I think all of us feel we need more study on this. We, we need to understand more uh, of the dynamics of it. So I wanted to thank the town manager and hold him to that. <laughs> yeah. He's true to his word. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Joe? I think just very specifically to what Mr. Greeley just said, I mean, I think you mentioned the transportation. I don't know what our leeway is within traffic rules and orders. I, I know we're restricted a lot as far as truck traffic or whatnot, but that, that's the type of thing that I could see us to, you know, try to delve into. I would appreciate any support that you can give me so that I can come back and <laughs> present something that you can uh, support. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion of recommendation of no action, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Uh, uh, no. We have a vote of four to one. Uh, Diane voted uh, against the recommendation. Uh, is there any? Yeah. Um, so that finishes our warrant article hearings for the night. How about 21? Did we already do we it? We did. I took it out of order. Uh, oh, really? So my opinion opinions. matters not. Is that okay? <laughs> no, no problem. So again, I'm sorry I was so late. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Uh, correspondence received. We have a letter from Paul, Paul, excuse me, Paula Dimasha. Uh, Paula, are you here? Or is there anyone who wanted to talk about Crosswalk at Mass Ave and Daniels or Richardson? Uh, I passed this. Um, Seeing the correspondence on the agenda, I um, tried. I inquired whether or not TAC wanted it. In specific, Officer Rateau, uh, specific Officer Rateau thought that TAC should have it, and TAC said yes, we'd like it, or at least that said yes, we'd do it. Um, I won't put any words into their mouth beyond that. So I would suggest we refer this to TAC. Second. Uh, no, I move we refer to TAC. Is that second? Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 New business. Mrs. Kropowski. I have nothing other than to tell you, to remind you that February 27th, Thursday night, that um, we're going to have the awards for the police department if you're interested in going. I think it's 6 o'clock, but I'll double check. That's it. correct. It, it yeah. is 6 o'clock. What's the date? It's the 29th, Thursday. 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 Yeah. Just wanted to remind you of that. I'll Thank you. Mr. Berlinga. I have nothing further. Thank you. Nothing new. Thanks. Uh, just two uh, brief business of new, uh, two brief pieces of new business. Uh, first, in response to some inquiries from the board at the last meeting, uh, I met with John Marr and David Good in terms of beginning cable advisory or cable negotiation uh, discussions. So, uh, Attorney Marr has drafted uh, a letter to send to Comcast to kick off our interest in opening negotiations. Hopefully, I can finalize that in the next week. Share that with the board. Uh, and then talk to you more about the process that we'll start rolling out in terms of negotiations. As you know, it's staggered with each of the three providers, Comcast, RCN, and Verizon, so we have time to ramp up for each one, but also align what our goals are in those negotiations. Can I ask a question on that? If it's Please. Appropriate. Yep. Um, I don't know if this is appropriate that the chair or the town manager can let me know. When is the appropriate time to put in and repeat the request that the selectman's office chambers at the very least get Wi-Fi. Is this the appropriate time to start putting that before you? I mean, the school committee has it, their offices is there, and we have it downstairs and the town manager has it, but I know previous I, I, town I hall. Oh, you don't? Oh, I thought the town manager. Nope, nobody in town hall has it. Okay, is this the appropriate time to propose that to you or no? It's the appropriate time, but I'm going to tell you that we'll going to be able to get that done outside of anything to do with the cable negotiation. Okay, I just want to keep banging the drum just like talking about getting sure. Wi-Fi, just because previous town council two or three times she put in and you know it's not I'm not trying to get it so I can go online. I don't even still don't quite get Wi Fi and I just don't want to know. So okay it's I made I took advantage of the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very welcome. And the second piece, uh, as you know, uh, the town's currently undergoing uh, a study of parking in Arlington Center. Uh, there was a public survey done, a public forum done several weeks ago. Uh, recently, uh, internally, they presented to the working group of some of their initial recommendations. They're also going to present those to uh, the Chamber of Commerce this Thursday morning, or members of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, followed by another public forum, take some last-minute feedback before making final recommendations, which will come before this board uh, in the next several months. So I just wanted to keep the board abreast of that progress. Not a chance of those being controversial, is there? 
That's it's barking and That's a Arlington. chance that they won't be controversial. <laughs> Are there barking. any any dogs involved? <laughs> barking. Barking and barking. Yeah. Uh, and that's all I have for new business. All right. Uh, Kevin. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just uh, briefly, if I may, uh, through you, sir, to Adam. Um, Adam, I saw something about the opening of the bids for the East Arlington project. Is that, where, was, where are we at that, where so is DOT at this point? Mass DOT has opened uh, the bids for the Mass Ave Corridor project. Uh, the low bidder was <coughs> J.H. Lynch of Cumberland, Rhode Island, uh, but it takes them about a month to go through all the bids, ensure qualifications, check references uh, before they actually award a bid. So there's still, a, a, from now, basically a month until we actually learn that they are officially the contractor. Uh, after that, there'll still be several more weeks before DOT would issue a notice to proceed and give us the opportunity to actually start communicating with the contractor. Um, Adam and I have been talking about, I'm going to revive the old town hall topics program on cable, and we want to get, get as much information out to people about what's about to happen, what is happening, what's the calendar, what's the dates, how are we doing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there also will be an ombudsman, is that a right phrase? Yeah, that definitely Appointed works, by yeah. DOT, uh, as we have done at the Sims Project for, for uh, neighborhoods and stuff, so. Uh, I'm going to be meeting with the TAC uh, early next month to also talk with them about what strategies we all can employ uh, to inform people, let and make sure everybody knows what's happening. It's a very exciting project. Thank yeah. you, sir. All right, Diane. I'm going to, in advance, thank my colleagues' indulgence just because I'm always so proud of when we all get to dip, dip our toe into the school side. The Arlington, I know you want an update. Arlington High School varsity cheerleaders competed in their league qualification at Central Catholic High School in Lawrence, Mass. on Sunday, and they were successful and are continuing on to regionals, um, which is next Sunday in Chelmsford, along with the team that they cheer for, the sport that does two sports, the Arlington High School basketball are in the tournament. Um, they will play Tuesday night. It's an away game, and it's in Tewksbury, as well as really proud because I have several parents, we, I think we all have friends and parents who also have players on the Arlington High boys hockey team who also are in the tournament and will be playing St. John's Prep, ranked 15th, but 15th St. John's Prep sometimes is number two public school <laughs> hockey and that will be Wednesday night and I think that's a way, eight o'clock at Newman Jury Serena. So yeah. just very proud as well as our girls hockey team is doing really well and I have to follow them more closely. Okay. And I also want to, on behalf of myself and my colleagues thank the chairman um, along with um, Mrs. Malloy for um, taking the time to coordinate. I know you worked with Karen and others to um, get the town manager a performance review. Um, I know sometimes I look at certain tasks and say are we just doing this to do it and you know putting a lot of time into it but I really feel that um, through the chairman and, and the town manager Mrs. Malloy that um, this is one of the things that I did spend a, a good amount of time as my colleagues did but I think it was well worth it. Um, I think we re you really got it spot on, and, and Mrs. Malloy, um, and it's a tool that we had before, but I think we're really, you know, I sometimes have a little bit of a hesitation on it, but um, I'm really proud, and, and I want to thank you for the extra time and effort you put into this. Uh, you're very welcome, but I will say that I um, I really had the, the, the pleasure of just r redoing what we did last year. I mean, I, I didn't, who was bid. chairman? I <laughs> just, did you see where my hand went? I said, I guess who's coming next? I didn't have to say, Kevin, I knew you'd remind us. <laughs> and that's it, Mr. But, chairman. Uh, I, I agree, I was, I was really happy with the process. I'm really happy with the way we do it, and I think it, uh, it's a, uh, I think it's a powerful tool for us. It's, but we have, you opened the can of worms, I'm gonna no. ramble a little bit. Uh, we, it's a tough thing for a public board to manage a full-time employee because open meeting law says that all reviews have to be public and that is frankly awkward in a lot of ways. And we have to give them candid feedback, we have to give candid feedback in a public forum where everyone else can see when we're happy with Adam and we're not happy with Adam. Everyone else gets to, to watch and in fact the law says. And so this document um, and this process I think really helps us do that in a very productive way and um, I wish I could take credit for it but I can't. Yeah, Kevin. But, uh, but while I beg for the <laughs> praise, <laughs> And please stop, don't, uh, but this gentleman deserves an awful lot of credit, and along with uh, Karen Malloy and along with this board, we designed that instrument 
Uh, they did the, or Karen did the background for us. He kept insisting uh, in terms of, you know, it's really about time for the evaluation and that kind of thing. And, and Dan did an excellent job of just carrying on a process that all of us can take great pride in. Yeah. All right, uh, Joe. Uh, well, I'll say one other thing that I was very happy with was this. I agree. There's, there's this uh, public annual financial report, little four-page summary of the way the town is doing. It's, it's th things like this that really set us apart. Just a little suggestion. All those Chamber of Commerce folks who are coming over for that parking thing on Wednesday, yeah. give a little stack of those at that idea. table. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. Um, it's a very busy week, but just uh, I just want to note two things that might be of interest to the public. Um, tomorrow evening, it, both of these come out of the master planning process. Tomorrow evening in the Suckman's hearing room at seven o'clock, um, the inspection services department and the planning department will jointly be presenting, um, I think it's mostly gonna be the special services, but um, knowing more about Arlington zoning, really a primer on zoning, especially anybody who's a new town meeting member or a veteran town meeting member or, or a resident of the community who wants to really understand a lot of the concepts behind zoning and how Arlington zoning works and, and has uh, come to evolve, I think it'll be a very um, useful session, very, very um, educating session. Um, and on Wednesday evening, there is the next um, uh, Master Plan Advisory Committee um, uh, public forum. This one will be on uh, public facilities um, and that will be in the Senior Center at seven o'clock. And that's also open to the public and public um, Public's input is really sought there. I know we'll see you. <laughs> Thank you. Steve. Um, following up on Ms. Mahan's update on the Arlington High boys hockey team, if you're going over the game, feel free to stop by the Arlington Catholic game, which is the same night at the same place. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I really didn't. They were at 6 o'clock. So oh. yeah. <laughs> I should have known that. So. Who are we playing, Steve? Reading. 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 All right. Uh, I've got nothing. I move to adjourn. God bless you. Second. All those favor, please say aye. We aye. are adjourned. How'd you get two seats?